Good morning, everyone. Um, it's great to be here, and it's good to see all your faces. And you can't see the mission bells because of their books, but I can tell there's people there. So I'm glad to have them here, too. Um, first, we have the welcome and congregational news. Does anyone, no one gave me any announcements to share. So I'm going to go into my first, well, I've got one back here. Okay, go, Karen. Next week is Eloise's birthday, and she is shocked by that. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Eloise. Happy birthday to you. Very nice. So we... Lee's birthday is on Wednesday. He's not here, so we're not singing it again because he's not here. If he were here, we would sing it again. We got some upstairs there. Roxanne's birthday is next week. So the week, is there a Sunday in between there? Okay, so we'll sing to her next week. Okay, so Philip, your brother-in-law, you said? No, my brother. Brother, brother. is being laid to rest tomorrow. Yeah. And wh where did you say? In Arizona. In Arizona. Okay. Wow, that's a big deal. Yeah, sorry for that. Um, what I was going to share is May 3rd, my mom fell and broke her leg. She's very um, specific in that it was her hip, but it, she's saying it's her leg because she doesn't want that moniker. Um, she's doing better. She came home Thursday. Um, so she was in rehab for like a week and she's she's taking it slow, but she's she's doing much better. Um, so that's a little update on us. Oh, and another bit of news. Our Allie came home last night. She drove all the way from D.C. yesterday and is now back in town for the foreseeable future. So one more bird has returned to the nest. Yeah. Any other announcements? Up here. Upstairs. We got a couple. Uh, Merrill is an over-heart regional. We have a call, and so he's getting all checked out. Okay, so Merrill is in Overland Park Regional with a, he fell and he's being checked out. Got another one upstairs? Okay. Um, all right. I'm going to go to the call to worship. Actually, let's back up and I'm going to introduce our speaker. Um, aside from being one of my favorite speakers here at church, Jen is my wife. And um, I've written a few questions for us to get to know her a little bit better. Um, there's a no particular order. So in Major League Baseball, the players get to uh, pick their walk-up song. That's what they call it. So when they go to bat in the stadium, they play music. And what song would be your walk-up song? Welcome to the jungle. Okay. I thought you might pick a pink song, but yeah. I didn't have time to think. I didn't have preparation for these questions. No, this is just rapid fire. Um, who was your first celebrity crush? Donny Osmond. Donny Osmond. I was going to say Scott Bayo, so I didn't know. Yeah, Donny Osmond. Before Scott Bayo was a twinkle in his father's eye. What movie did you watch as a kid? that impacted you in the scary wise? Oh, I, I know that right away. There was a movie called Roller Coaster, where Roller someone Coaster. would, I should not have been watching it, Mom. We, in Gen Xers watched movies we should not have been watching. 
we were not supervised. <laughs> and I watched a movie, Roller Coaster. I'd say Jaws and Roller Coaster. Roller Coaster was a movie where there were bombs planted on these roller coasters, and it terrified me. Julie, do you remember that? Yeah. I don't remember. I had a, my brother forced me to watch bad things I wasn't supposed to watch. Um, if you could switch the li lives with someone for a day, who's who would you switch with? So like a Freaky Friday thing where you'd go and be that person for a day. It could be someone you know, it could be celebrity. I would say, and I, and I do I get their abilities? You would be them for a day. Pink. That's, that's okay. I'm gonna do a concert. Yep. <laughs> and if you could visit, <laughs> if you could visit a foreign country, where would you go? Croatia. Would you elaborate why you picked that? Because we're gonna go there, and you're Croatian. Next year, we're going to Croatia. Next, right after TJ graduates, we're all getting on a, a bus plane and going to Croatia. So it's my first time going anywhere. I've, I've been to St. Joe, but now I can go to another country. So we're very, very excited. We're learning um, vocabulary. So I'm giving the family a word a day to learn. So let's test her. Oh, no. Yes. Not. How do you say thank you? I don't remember. How do you say excuse me? A prostate. Oh, thank you. Or excuse me. Thank you, Isavala. So um, now we will go into the call to worship. And I debated with this whether to share. I don't know if my little story will be better before or after. Um, I'm going to do it before and then let the words sink in. So. I replaced a guy at work who was a very forceful, in-your-face manager, leader, and some of the guys like that, and they're looking for that guy who's going to come in and kind of bully stuff around, and that ain't, ain't the way I do it. It's more of a lead-by-example and kind of prop up the people to lead the way so with that as i read um this prayer think about the leading by example and it talks about that in there so the call to worship is uh today is ascension sunday catherine of siena was in, was instrumental in peacemaking during the middle medieval age she lived a life of prayer in, in 1378, her secretary wrote down her words in a manuscript titled Dialogue. And it, it's as follows. When my only begotten son returned to me 40 days after his resurrection, he left her company and ascended to heaven. On the day of his ascension, the disciples were as good as dead because their hearts had been lifted up to heaven along with my son, who is wisdom. So the angel said to them, do not stay here, for he is seated at the Father's right hand. When he had been raised on high to return to me, his Father, I sent the teacher, the Holy Spirit. So through my son's, so though my son's presence was no longer with you, his teachings, the way he made for you this lovely and glorious bridge, remained. The solid stones grounded in that teaching First he acted, and from his actions he built the way. He taught you more by example than with words, always doing first what he talked about. May we worship this day as those who follow the way and walk the path of the disciple.
Heavenly Father, this morning we gather in your house, joined by our loved ones on Zoom. We are together. May your Holy Spirit be with each of us as we prepare for the word of today. Our faith and thankfulness will be strong. In Jesus' name, amen. Our prayer for peace today includes a poem. In fact, other elements of the service will include um, some poems also. And the poetry is written by members of our faith. The first one is called Sanctuary. We're in a sanctuary and this centering poem has to do with the meaning of sanct the, the few meanings of sanctuary. After I read the poem and offer a prayer, we will sing the song sanctuary. Lord prepare me with our own voices. And so it all kind of goes together. An enclave, retreat, cloister, a haven, home called to be apart from the world and yet in the world each seeks sanity in the midst of mindless avarice compassionate indifference polarized righteousness political expediency each seeks sanctuary who decides on the appropriate manner to deal with inequity eternally poor in means and spirit do this unto the least of these, my brethren, and you do it unto me. Who is a neighbor? Who seeks sanctuary? Where there is a person willing to respond to the call to the neighborhood, willing to open heart and home, give the means for anyone to find acceptance, willing to offer sanctuary. Is there a community where we are all accepted? no matter means, no matter birth, no matter personal condition, is there a group of people to look beyond learned limitations, to see creation through the heart of the creator, to see, to offer sanctuary? I know how to do that. <laughs> Lord, creator of all life, we are aware of your presence in this space and in our hearts. Thank you for this time of holiness. We gather in worship and praise for all you have given, shared, and done. We gather in peace, seeking your peace. Grant us your grace. Forgive us for all we have left, ungiven, unshared, undone. Help us more fully understand the gift of your Son in our lives and to all people. Open our hearts and our minds. Connect us through our worship that we might deeply embrace the call of your kingdom as a congregation mission center and global faith community lord we thank you for all things in jesus name amen we're going to sing lord prepare me twice first time soft second time strong lord prepare me to be a sanctuary
I have come to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And you fed me. I was in prison. And you visited me. I was naked. And you clothed me. I was enmeshed in sin. And you accepted and forgave me. I was alone. And you invited me into your hearts and homes. I was caught in grief. My tears fell endlessly, and you came and shed your tears with me. Surely, Surely Zion, Zion is, is in, in our, our midst. midst. I have come to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. As a mother holds her children in love and care, I hold you. As a mother nurtures and heals with love, I heal and nurture you. You are my children. The stars that shine in the night are but a pale reflection of the glories I have prepared for you in my house. You shall establish Zion for my creation. It is the call that I have given you. Zion, Zion is in, is our, in midst. our midst. I have come to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Oh, upon me and 
and that spirit within me hungers to hear as I continue to speak and reveal myself to you. Ask, and I answer with that which you need. Knock, and the door is open, so my spirit can abide with you all of your days. Zion abides. I have come to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Filled with the Spirit, you are responsible for all that you've been given. Filled with my Spirit, you are one. There are no differences separating you from each other in my eyes. Each of you are precious in my sight. Creation calls you to clean up your mess that you've made care of what you have been given. Your agency has allowed you to ignore your responsibilities. Consequences come from choices, both good and bad. Zion, Zion always. always. On April 5th, I met a woman named Kelsey. She gave me permission to share a little bit about the last six weeks and my time with her. She weighed 577 pounds when she came to the hospital and she was admitted because she had respiratory failure. We are the same age. She also has depression and anxiety. And when she came to us, she had lived a life as I have come to learn that many people in um, this situation are in one room, not going out for logistical reasons, um, sitting in a chair, a lift chair that helped her to stand up, and she had a commode next to it, and that is where she also slept. And she did not walk at all she stood when it was necessary so we learn about these patients and we all as a collective group in the rehab department take a collective sigh we know and we usually have a handful in a large hospital at one time and it's not just about the physical and about problem solving logistics. It's about the counseling that needs to take place to decide what's going to happen as the end result. It's a huge question mark. So after about a week, she was recovering from her breathing issues, but she still couldn't stand up. It took five of us to help her stand, even raising the bed up. She was not tall, so if you raise the bed up, we had to get a large platform and put beside the bed and use ultimate concern for safety for ourselves and for Kelsey. Um, there really are no good machines to help with this. We have some machines that can be used, but they're not uh, predictable. So four of us eventually after a few more days could help her stand up for 15 seconds she was terrified, emotionally paralyzed. She would ask daily, multiple times a day, will I ever go home? And here's the hard part. The hard part for me is that she's not that different at that point than she was at home, but getting her home was just a really big barrier. I thought home wasn't where, it wasn't going well in the first place. So that's not the best choice, I honestly wasn't sure, but I gave answers anyway. You see, we think we know how people get this way. We think, or we can guess people that end up in unusual places in their lives. Daily, I see homeless people, alcoholics, addicts, and I've come to learn that life is about 50 to 100 decisions a day. We all make probably 50 decisions a day that direct us 
down our path to our goals, to our tasks, our emotions come in and play a part. And all it takes is one or two of these decisions to cause a derailment in how things end up. What I've come to learn is that these people, all that I mentioned and Kelsey, are not very different from me at all. When we have conversations, when we laugh, when we joke, they're not that different from me at the core. Weeks went on, there were daily breakdowns, same questions over and over. How did I get this way? And that's, how did I get this way? And you know, I mean, you don't know, you don't know how you got this way, but she didn't understand it. Me and my coworker, Dave and Hannah and Brooke, we took turns answering and I answered, I answered. I said, and, and I was very direct because you gave up on yourself because you never stood or walked for no reason. You only stood when you had to. You didn't believe in your self-worth and you stopped moving. The good part of that then followed with, we're reversing all those things now. We're doing all those things now. We're standing for no reason. You're gonna believe in yourself and you're gonna move over and over and over. So it was literally the same conversation every single day. Now you are doing all of those things. So, so stop, stop, don't say that anymore. And I was kind. I wasn't so direct that I was unkind, but I knew that nobody else was going to, um, well, me and my, it wasn't just me, it was many of us. We did not let her refuse. And we could have, and we do sometimes, we do allow people choices to not get better, but I felt like she had a quality, a recent inner motivation, a recent sense of purpose. She graduated from Shawnee Mission West. She worked from home. She had two adult children who I met who were much like, much like my own children. She had a mother who I met and her mother didn't seem like an enabler. It took every fiber of my being on some days to go in her room and turn on the lights because it was dark every day. It was dark. It's kind of a metaphor, right? Turn on the lights. Sometimes we would go in and not talk to Kelsey. We would just talk to each other and turn on some music. And we didn't say, do you want to get up today? <laughs> Julie knows. We don't, we, don't, we don't ask at this point with these people, we don't ask. We say, hi, turn the lights on, it's time. Kind of a metaphor. Put her socks on and thank the Lord for my coworkers because we joked and jabbed with Kelsey and she jabbed us back. We were beginning to have fun. And we had a lot of inside jokes those six weeks. Kelsey left the hospital yesterday and she went home, weighing 487 pounds. She was 80 pounds lighter. She could stand without assistance. She could stand 10 times in a row. She could walk 50 feet and she hadn't walked any feet in nine months. It's very unusual for us to progress someone beyond when they came in. It's, I don't remember that happening very many times. It's very unusual that that would happen. We were saved by that she had some breathing problems and she couldn't go yet. And the case managers couldn't figure out how to get her home. That helped me, it gave us more time. She is becoming a very determined person. We're gonna pause. I'm gonna play on my clarinet. We're going to sing the first verse of what will eventually be our closing hymn. We're gonna sing each of the four verses 
progressively stronger like we did our other songs. So I'm gonna play a little intro and then sing quietly with me this first, ver first verse and just think about how it makes you feel. I think sometimes in our lives, things seem completely hopeless. And sometimes we're spent and we require a power supply from somewhere else. And that is what our creator God reminds us today. Come closer to me and I will supply the energy that you need. Over this last several months, since the beginning of the year, our congregation has heard of the spiritual practices. I'm making a promise to myself to go back and embrace and connect with more of those because it's not just going to happen. Our spirituality is a muscle that has to be exercised. When we think about standing for no reason, or I tell frequently my patients, now go home and your whole job is to, you walk to go to the kitchen, you walk to go to your car, you have to walk for no reason, even if it's pacing in a room in your house or stand 10 times when you don't have to get up. Spiritual practices are exercising a muscle that will get stronger if we use it. It's a muscle that has to be exercised. The next poem is the first one was by i didn't tell you who wrote it it's some of you may know who he is dean robinson is that right am i saying the right name hold on dean l robinson this one is deborah brew and this is called aspiration Jesus, may I walk with you? Will you share your light with me? The night is dark and shadowy. Sounds engulf me. A spider's mist unbroken is whispering to my soul. Its cold persuasion tells me not to go. Jesus, I must walk this night, though my eyes are filled with sleep. The road is steep and hidden forms creep by me. I need to walk beside you to feel your hand take mine, and together we will see the break of day. And now I will read you our scripture. We're doing things backwards today, mixing it up. Scripture's at the end instead of at the beginning. And it's powerful, it really is. This is a, a scripture from Ephesians. And so as I read it, I want you to hear like play background music in your head because that's kind of how it is for me when I read it. Um, this is all about God is calling you today. 
Jesus' voice is always playing in our heads. I'm, these are my words. I'm not reading the scripture yet. <laughs> it sounded a little. Huh. Um, this is what I hear in the poems and in the song and in the hymns and in the words. It's happening. We're being, a voice is calling us today. Remember those spiritual practices? Have you been, have you been exercising that muscle? And this is sort of the scriptural, scriptural version of all of, of this voice that I hear. Since I have heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all saints, I've not stopped giving thanks for you. Remembering you in my prayers, I keep asking that the Lord God, Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you a spirit and a wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of glorious inheritance in the saints and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is like the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted Christ when he raised him from the dead, seated him at his right hand in his heavenly realms, far above rule and authority, power and dominion, and every title that can be given, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Let's sing our second verse. It should be the last slide, I think. Go back back one. Yep, okay. Hold on, I'm getting ready. Little intro again. If we take time to stop today and listen, we can know Christ and move forward from where we are. I have the honor of reading a beautiful poem for the disciples' generous response. Honestly, the poem fits so well in this service. It fits more with what Jennifer just said than with the disciples' generous response. But it is it is an amazing poem written by Bruce Crockett. And I've read it like four times. And every time I read it, I have a different perspective on it. And Kelsey was in physical darkness and in emotional darkness. I've been in darkness. We've all been in darkness. And Bruce Crockett expresses the way out of darkness. And it's actually really easy because we have an invitation from God. And here's what Bruce wrote. Out of the darkness I come with new energy, a new and fresh perspective. Out of the darkness I come, nourished by rest and by an abiding love of God. Out of the darkness I come into the light of inspiration and vision. 
Out of the darkness I come with gratitude for a patient God who invites me every day into his presence. Out of the darkness I come only to experience mercy and compassion, only to experience encouragement and empowerment and to be set, sent forth into the world to share the great love of Christ. Out of the darkness I come. During this time of a disciple's generous response, we focus on aligning our heart with God's heart. Our offerings are more than meeting budgets or funding missions. We can tangibly express our gratitude to God through our offerings, who is the giver of all. As we share our mission tithes, either by placing money in the plates or through e-tithing, we use this time to thank God for the many gifts we've received in life. Our hearts grow aligned with God's heart when we gratefully receive and faithfully respond by living Christ's mission. Our offering plates are in the back and you are invited to give as you feel for your generous response and we shall bless the offerings at this time. God, thank you. Thank you for this church family. Thank you for the things that you do for us. Thank you for allowing us to help others and showing us how we can help. Bless the money that it can be used to the best as possible. Thank you, God, for everything, everything that you give us. In your name we pray, amen. So I wanted to do a couple things here real quick before we end this. Um, what, a couple of days ago, Jane was talking to me about saying the benediction today, and she asked me if I would say something that maybe my father had written before because she loved his his uh, prayers. And so I walk in the I walk in today, and I see this up here on the screen, and this is this is my mom made that many years ago, and this was in our home for. Uh, as, as I grew up, and I'll just repeat it, it's for those that can't see it, think things you want to be thinking when Christ comes. Say things you want to be saying when Christ comes. Do things you want to be doing when Christ comes, and go places you want to be going when Christ comes. Um, and this is the prayer from my Father. Heavenly Father, 
We want to go from this place feeling your spirit has assured us that we are that you are our God and we are your people. May each day of this week find ourselves expressing your spirit in our lives and to those around us and even by our thoughts and prayers for others we don't even know. Wilt thou bring a renewal of health to those who are sick? Wilt thou give strength to those who are tempted? Wilt thou bring comfort to those whose hearts are heavy with discouragement or sorrow? May all of us serve thee faithfully as we serve others with enthusiastic expression for their lives. We pray these things in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.